Serious, Redditors who have been kidnapped, what was your experience like? Are there things you do now that you would have never done before? Not much like the other stories here but my ex-boyfriend abducted me from my parents home when I was 19. Threw me in the trunk of his car and drove off. About 8 hours later, a lot happened in between. Including me getting out of the trunk and into the back seat, the police spotted his car and engaged in a high speed pursuit. He crashed into a tree. Served about 4 years. And is out with a wife and 3 kids now. It didn't affect me as much as people expected it to and I haven't really changed anything in my life because of it. It happened in the past and that's how I view it. I have the longer version in my post history if you sought by highest. I can elaborate more or provide proof that it happened to me if anybody cares. Edit. I'm headed back to work so I won't be able to respond to anyone until my next break. I was kidnapped in February of this year by a local gang and held for 95 days. Sunlight. Sunlight and real food are what I missed most. The gang had broken into my home last year and stole about 30-40 grand so the leader thought they could get another payday by doing it again this year. Except this year they only found about 1500 bucks and a some weed. I was let free after 95 days. 95 days of being treated like an animal humbles a person. I've changed Alet. I started two legitimate businesses as soon as I was let free. I'm going to leave this country at the end of this year hopefully otherwise I am positive this gang will come back for a third time. No reason they won't if they've already come twice. I'm afraid of what might happen the third time. Edit. A word. I was forced to march in front of a bot with 20 other people who had been rounded up by the VRS. We marched and camped with them for 2 weeks and were used as human shields around vehicles and outposts. About 4 of us were shot. Three of us had died before I was taken to give stitches to some sort of officer who had a gash in his leg and I was able to negotiate my release and the release of one woman who I had marched with who was also able to pay. I wouldn't say I do things differently now. But it drained the life out of me completely at the time. Any desire I had before that to stay and ride the war out was totally gone. To this day I have an extremely derisive attitude towards war and resent those who start them. Edit. To clarify. The VRS were a military force during the war in Yugoslavia. They committed many war crimes and produced many notorious war criminals. Also. A bov is a sort of small, relatively, ghostly armored vehicle with a turret. Used to go running in my area when I was in high school. I've had older men offer me rides and follow me around, driving really slow back and forth past me giving me the creeper eyes. I've even had women try and offer me into their car. One guy in a shitty rusty red van followed me for 20 minutes. I remember the look on his eyes. Leaning back into his car. Shirtless. I remember crossing the road several times and he kept making U-turns. I eventually faked crossing the road at one point. And jumped a brick wall into this guy's yard. A huge dog came running out to meet me. I chose the dog versus the guy. The dog ran up to me to attack and simply licked me. An old dude came outside and I told him about it. I helped him work on his old Jaguar for hours before I felt safe to run home. Also I'm a guy. And this was when I was 16-17 years old. I can't imagine how a woman may feel. I just got my concealed weapons permit and I'm working on getting my GF hers. FCK creepers. Back in the 80s when I was 11 I was staying at my cousin's house in South Florida for the summer. We were outside playing basketball when my cousin went inside to get a drink. A car pulled up and the guy driving yelled over to me. Saying he was trying to deliver a pizza and asked if I could help him find an address. I went over to the passenger side of the car to hear him better and told him where to find the street he was looking for. He reached over to open the passenger side door and said I should just show him because it would be faster. He even promised to give me his tip for the help. I knew I would be in trouble for even talking to this guy but being 11 and stupid and the prospect of a few dollars was hard to pass up. After all. This was just a pizza delivery guy. I started to climb into the passenger seat. I remember the pizza box was on the seat so I started to move it so I could get in but the box was cold to the touch and when I lifted it. 
It was obviously empty. He had tried to grab it before I did. And I remember this moment that seemed to last forever as we were both standing there holding this empty box. That's when he grabbed my wrist and tried to pull me in. I was struggling to break free. Still half in and half out of the car when my cousin came back outside and yelled. The guy let go and sped off with the passenger door still swinging. I think that was probably the most terrified I had even been. Not sure if it would be considered a kidnapping. But I was held against my will when my date insisted we swing by his place really fast. After being raped. Forcefully cleaned. To remove potential evidence I guess. He dropped me off in the middle of nowhere. Now I conceal carry. I don't let people know where I live. I always insist on driving myself. I also have code words with friends who will check in when I am out. I also take note of all exits when I enter a room. When I was 7 years old I was playing outside and car kept driving up and down the street for what was most likely 15 minutes. He pulled up next to my house and asked me for directions. He grabbed onto me and luckily my mother saw what was happening and grabbed a shotgun and came out and shot into the air and the guy speed off. It seriously affected me but I didn't realize it was being kidnapped that did it to me. For many, many years I was terrified of men. I did not trust them. I always felt terrified in their presence. Like they had other intentions and might do me harm. I didn't even believe they have emotions until about a decade ago. I always assumed it was because my dad wasn't around and a grandpa and godfather weren't enough to make up for it. But that's because I totally forgot about the event. I was 5. Walking down the street with my mom. As a man passed us he bent down. Scooped me up. And took off. So my mom ran after him. Thankfully she managed to catch up and rip me from him. Then ran into the nearest store where they called the cops caused by them my mom and I were in hysterics. I'm super grateful that my mom managed to catch me. My life was rough for a good chunk of it. But it clearly could have been far worse. And I'm totally better on the man thing. Knowing that this happened helped me to work through it. Surrounding myself with an awesome husband and great guy friends has helped a lot as well. When I was around 14. 9th grade. I went to a friend's house after school with another girl. Three girls total. My friend lived with her grandfather. But he wasn't home at the time. The doorbell rang and she went to answer it. I was curious. Because I was never allowed to answer the door at my own house. I peeked around the corner and listened in on the conversation. There was a man with a clipboard in uniform. He said that he needed to read the meter that was in the garage and asked if she would let him in. She started to open the door. I ran to the door and slammed it in his face. No explanation. I always watched the news with my parents and had just heard a story about a man posing as a beta reader. That's when I learned that meters are always on the outside of the house. Anyways. We didn't call the cops or anything. I think we were too embarrassed by our naivety. We joked about it for years. Though. Meter reader became an inside joke. I think it's only because we were too scared to consider the alternative ending to the story. I'm so very sorry OP.